Hello and welcome to the virtual pipe organ project. This is Grand Org tutorial number three. I'm going to show you how to match your MIDI input device to your MIDI output device. So first off, uh, click on File, go to Settings, and then go to MIDI Devices. Okay, your list will probably uh, be a bit different than mine, but that's okay. You set this up to how your console works. So what I want to do for my setup is link my input launch pads to my output launch pads. So we're going to make so we got the corresponding ones ticked off. So we just need to now match them. So go to MIDI output device, click on that. And then you're going to see I'm saying no device. I can move this screen over so we can see that this is the one here that's highlighted, my MI20 colon 1. So I'm just going to scroll down here and make sure that same one's selected and click on OK. And I'm going to do the same one to my 24 colon 1. And click on OK. So now that I've done that, I will show you how this is of benefit when you're setting up your organ console. So I'm going to program my 16 port Bourdon into my left launch pad. So I'm going to right click on the, on the Bourdon. I'm going to click on Detect Complex MIDI Setup. Now I'm going to select my uh, Novation pad that I want this connected to. I'm going to hit it again as it's asked me to do that. And there, my receive has been set up. So, like I said, my left launch pad, the event is 9x note on toggle. So, what that means is when I uh, press the uh, associated pad uh, once, it will then turn on the stop. And then it will leave it on until I hit that same pad again to turn it off. Pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, my channels, it's on channel 1. Uh, the data is showing 13. So on a Novation Launchpad Mini Mark III, uh, there's two modes to that. There's the user mode and the programmer's mode. I highly recommend using programmer's mode, but that's something else for a future tutorial tutorial on Novation Launchpads. So with it in programmer's mode, the data 13 means that it's on my bottom row of pads. There's eight, there's technically nine rows and nine columns. I'll show you that later in another tutorial. Uh, so what 13 means, it's my bottom row and it's the third pad in to the right. So that's the pad that will turn on and turn off that board on. Now I'm going to go over to the send and now I'm going to click on copy current receive event. So what that does is a little bit of setup for me. It's uh, uh, selected the uh, corresponding launch pad, which is my left one. It's left the event blank, so I'm going to need to change that to 9x note. Channels on one, so that's matched up. As we saw under the receive, my data was 13, MIDI note's going to be 13. And then we have off value and on value. Now on your consoles, if you have thumb pistons or lighted stop, um, pull stops or whatnot, this is, uh, you would leave this exactly as is. So an off value of zero would be at the selected uh, switch whatever it is is not lighted and then 127 would be its full luminal uh, value so it'd be fully fully bright but on Novation launch pads and this is why I love them is you can have varying different colors displayed on them so if I kept the v off value at z zero the pad that I selected would not be giving any sort of light, so I would have no visual context to know whether or not anything's programmed to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change that off value to 35. 
because uh, I love to have different colors for each uh, family of stop I've decided to go for a more turquoise color for my flute stops and the, of course all us organists know that a bordon is a flute stop so the 35 would be the uh, less intense version of the turquoise I've found in my experimentation and the 33 for my on value is going to be bright brighter so what this allows is to have uh, technically the same color but when the stop is turned off well it's going to be dim and then when I turn the stop on it's going to be more bright so I have a way of knowing if the stop is on or not and you can see I've just hit the, my corresponding pad for that board on it's turned my board on on I want to hit the pad again and it's turned it off. Another thing I'm going to show you quickly is this upper limit thing. Uh, that will automatically set when you do com detect complex MIDI setup. But let's say you decide that you're going to enter in all this stuff manually because let's say you had a, a spreadsheet or something. Uh, let's then you forget to set the upper limit to one. It's going to be set at zero. So let me show you what happens when the upper limit's at zero. Yeah, the stop does not stay on. So that's pretty crucial. Make sure you have your upper limit set to one. That way this note on toggle actually does take effect. Because if it's at zero, it will just act like a nine X note. So it'll think you're just playing on the keyboard. And there, you can see I've fixed that. So if today I've touched on how to match your MIDI input and output devices, and also showed you the difference between uh, note um, toggle and a regular note, and the importance of that upper limit. Lower limit, we don't need to worry about it. That's set at zero. That's fine. So that concludes tutorial number three in my Grand Org series. Uh, if you've liked this video, don't forget to click on like. If you find my tutorials useful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And most of all, I hope you guys have a great day.